everybody. Welcome back to The Commute with So Wizard Podcast. Had a little bit of a technical glitch on rendering the animation for this week's direct focus, so that will be tomorrow, and you get The Commute today. So we're going to go with top five TV shows off the top of my head right now as I sit, and I'm sure everyone has their own opinions, as you should, and I'm sure there's going to be a lot of shows that I didn't consider. So take this for what it is. Let's talk about five great TV shows. I'm also going to do these five in no particular order because it's comparing so many different varied things that it's impossible. Stranger Things. Stranger Things' first three seasons have been as perfect as perfect can be for a TV show. The kids in it are fantastic. The writing has been incredibly strong. The Duffer Brothers are really doing their thing and keeping true to what they want the show to be. Incredible show. We have one more season coming. We all hope they can stick the landing, but we can all rest comfortably knowing it can't be as bad as the last season of Dexter or Game of Thrones. Breaking Bad. Breaking Bad was one of two shows that put AMC on the map. It really, I believe, changed how TV was running right before streaming became as big as it is. And the most incredible thing about Breaking Bad was taking these characters that you could feel bad for and make the hero become the villain and then give them a redemption story. And the way they kept it going for so long with his wife finding out and his kids finding out and, well, kid, and how it never felt too ridiculous, even when cartels got involved, even when people are blowing up, it never felt like it got away from what it was, and that was a really, really, really in-depth character study. It was Mad Men. This one isn't as high-profile in a lot of ways. It was a more subtle show with a lot of guys in old-style, boxy American suits sitting in boardrooms and talking, and the main character was incredibly flawed to the point where I have had a hard time getting other people in on the show, like my wife, for example. She's watched a lot of it. She understands the quality, likes the attention to detail and time setting and all that, but following Don Draper, John Hamm's character, is he's, he's kind of a scumbag in a lot of ways, and him being flawed is a lot of the driving force behind the show. It's a very good show. It's one of those shows that takes everything to another level, and as someone who likes to write, I won't go as far to say I am a writer, it's something that both makes you feel like you'll never be able to do something this good, but also inspires you to want to create something. This is one I feel pretty confident will probably always be in a top five, or at the very least a top ten for me. The Office. NBC's long-running sitcom remake of the British original. This show launched a lot of careers, and this show also gave a lot of smaller talents a chance to shine. Pretty much everyone who was on the cast was in the writer's room. The show has this mad lib free wielding feel where you can watch it and easily think that they were kind of just allowed to let loose and then the editors did a fantastic job putting it together. But that show was so meticulously written and so much control on the set, there was not room to go off on a tangent to alter a joke. I mean, leads were allowed to alter a joke within the confines of the joke, but the show was essentially written like a song where everything had its time, its place, and its tempo. That show managed to balance the mundane with great comedy and a whole lot of heart. I think The Office should be the barometer for what a sitcom should be. Go with Lost. I know a lot of people turned on that show after the kind of lackluster ending. I don't even want to go as far to say that it had a bad ending. That show had so much so much mythology and so much going on and so many characters and so many timelines and time periods. There was too much to tie up in one episode. I don't think that show had an ending where the majority of people are really great, satisfied. That was one that really benefited from being in a pre-streaming era because watching it week to week and having each answer bring 10 more questions and the viral marketing they did, you could get wrapped up in that thing all week long. Lost was another pivotal show, not just for me, but I think for how TV shows are done and 
network streaming services creators alike are still trying to capture that next lost. And those are five of the most influential, important TV shows to me. What's your list? Let's hear it. Leave us a note in the comments. Drop us a line on social media. Thanks for taking this ride with me. Be sure to listen to So Wizard Podcast wherever you get your podcast. Updated every single week on every podcatching app under the sun. Also be sure to go to SoWizardPodcast.com for reviews, recommendations, merchandise, and more. So Wizard also has a Patreon page where you can monetarily support the show for bonus content. Uh, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a lot of new things coming. I'm working on a new segment. Should be filming it this week. That should be a bi-weekly series going opposite of direct focus.